By all metrics, Everything Everywhere All at Once is the greatest Asian American film ever made. But... Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. It's official, it's the highest grossing A24 film ever. That means it's beat out uncut gems and it is also a Oscar front runner, David. People cannot stop talking about how much they love this movie, how it's made and Michelle Yao. They love Michelle Yao. So many people asked us to make this breakdown and you know on our channel, we're always gonna take a Asian cultural analytical view on it. So we're gonna go from the micro, work our way to the mid and then go to the macro. Listen, we could spend 20 minutes talking about how great this movie was and how you should go see it and the editing and the pacing. However, it's more interesting for us to talk about why it is actually low key, more stereotypical than you think. So if you're excited by that video, please hit that like button and let's get into it. In the micro, Andrew, there are 600 review channels breaking down the masterful technician work of the Daniels, the Russo brothers. Is this an Asian film? Is it not? But let me tell you guys this. To the regular watcher, it's almost like The Matrix mixed with Rick and Morty, mixed with like turning red, and sort of in a weird way, a lot of Asian films that came out in the past five years. Yeah, we're gonna expand on that later, but I would say when it comes to A24 as a studio, you know, they're kind of known as the biggest independent or like art house film studio. So I guess in the rap world, I would consider some of these movies, if they were artists like Kendrick Lamar, Lupe Fiasco, J. Cole, Chance the Rapper, these are people who who don't necessarily have the most club bangers and they kind of exist outside of maybe like the, the true gangster rap scene. However, they are like very well respected. Right, right. I would compare them to like a uh, a24 to like raucous records in the early 2000s mm. where it was like mos dev talib kwali all the underground artists that were making major sales but still making like boom bap like non-club music yeah. or were on there and that's sort of like a24 they are the biggest indie house all the other indies got to be looking at a24 like man y'all getting too big y'all ain't even belong as sundance and um, david is is this film an asian american film quote and unquote Man, it's tough to say because probably on the top six or seven most important people to make this film like turn, if you guys know about like everything that needs to happen in front of this camera and behind the camera, probably only like two are Asian. It was probably Daniel Kwan and Michelle Yeoh are the most like Asian essential pieces and the other five out of the top seven were probably not Asian. Right. Probably white, to be honest. Um, So, you know, I don't know. In the micro, I will say this, Andrew, the only plot point that I will make that I thought was interesting is some Asian hipsters, and we know that Asian hipsters are notoriously picky, right? People who Williamsburg, like, Silver Lake, right, wherever right, right. you live. They're not gonna take like the teaching Asian lessons from a film unless the refinement and polish is on the like exterior, like form side, right? So like, even though to me, I would say Tiger Tail or even some of the other Asian movies, Farewell or, you know, different pieces were probably way more like hitting me in the feels than this movie. For some people, they might need this movie to make them feel something right. about like their relationship with Confucian parents or filial piety. Well, some people don't want to eat Chinese food unless it's a hipster Chinese restaurant. Mission Chinese. Yeah. I mean, I think people feel things differently, you know, and sometimes it has to be delivered in a certain way for that person. Because I will say this, a lot of past Asian American films have been at times kind of cringy. Yeah, the so, execution level is yeah, not there yeah. because like we said, this is a hybrid of a lot of different movies. Like we said, Rick and Morty, The Matrix, mm -hmm. a bunch of you know Asian filial piety, kung fu movies. However, Andrew, the execution, like we said, the polish was 10 out of 10. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, those hybrid Kyries or the more controversial Spizikes, where it was like, man, this is a mixture of a bunch of things, but I kind of like it. Yo, I don't know if people will agree the Spizikes are cool. You might be on an island on that one, David. Moving on to the mid on why this movie is actually successful. The real reasons why, um, aside from the amazing filmmaking and editing and set design, guys, it's like a lot of other Asian films that came out. It is, it's just a crazy remix by the guys who made Turn Down for what? By the way, guys, this is not a diss on the film. No. I think it is the greatest Asian American film of all time. I've seen it multiple times. I will say this. It's Michelle Yeoh, reminds me of the hottest mom at church times two with more of a queen vibe on her. I was in a scene with her in Crazy Rich Asians that got cut out oh, and you were actually in it. I made it in a few frames behind Michelle Yeoh. I have been on this, I've been within 10 feet of Michelle Yeoh. So let me tell you this, I can feel her greatness. I didn't get to meet her, but on the Crazy Rich Asians set in Singapore, people were treating her like a god or goddess. Uh, guys, it is similar. 
Very, very similar to movies such as Shang-Chi, Turning Red, Uma, Farewell, Crazy Rich Asians, Tiger Tail. These all have to do with a parent and uh, son or daughter relationship. You know, one that is usually contentious. Sometimes they fight in the movie. One of them dies sometimes. Listen, this is what it's about. And so far, I feel like a lot of Asian movies can't get out of this. One, there is Kung Fu and lots of Kung Fu. So of course it helps that Michelle Yao has a Kung Fu background, of course. But also it's just like that whole like, uh, 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 just kid and parent thing. Like, what is it about this theme that just, every Asian movie has to have this. Kind of the dorky, soft Asian father too. Yeah, yeah, that's the, he was a hero, but To be fair, hero. somebody, I saw the argument on the internet, well, in a lot of modern Chinese families, the dad is the weaker one. Oh, and I was like, yeah, I, mean, I, was like, I kinda see that for some people. Um, but yes. For me, basically, this was like some off-white Jordan 1s in the Chicago colorway. Still kind of something you're familiar with, but elevated, or Andrew, why is Rude so popular right now in the streetwear world? It just looks like Tobacco Supreme, right? Because it reminds you of multiple things that you never see mashed together, but it's so masterfully done. Yeah. And that's why it's $600 for a pair of Rude sneakers. Yeah. Hey, one other comment I got to say is somebody was like, uh, hey, listen, I love Michelle Yao and James Hong and these guys. Are they just going to be in every Asian film? Uh, probably, <laughs> yeah, to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, guys, uh, you know, there's a lot of Asian content being made now some of it doesn't have these people in it some of them will so it is what it is um david moving on to the macro zooming out what does this mean for asian america can this movie be the greatest asian american film ever be extremely progressive and yet at the same time be very stereotypical absolutely because that's how a lot of things are when you go into the budokans and the hakasans and the pf changs and even you know how noodle to some extent even though how noodle being from asia you know should be a little bit different they're gonna give you some of the things that you very much expect but it's gonna give it to you at an elevated level and din tai fung got famous for serving shaolong bao they did not invent the shaolong bao the shaolong bao is not even from taiwan it is from shanghai but it got improved in taipei guys you know uh jeremy lin our our beloved friend man Oh, when I say beloved, like he's gone. Anyways, Joe, guys, Jeremy Lin, um, he he broke a lot of stereotypes. He was killing in the NBA, dunking on people, whatever, hitting game winners. That's something that people did not think Asians could do previously, right? But Jeremy is also an avid gamer and plays Dota. So right. that's and also he went to very, Harvard. And he went to Harvard with a 4.0 in high school. That's also very stereotypical. So as Jeremy broke stereotypes, he also confirmed some. And, and that's just okay. That is what it is. Just like everything all at once, it broke some stereotypes as in like, oh, uh, non-Asian people don't want to watch Asian faces. I think it broke that stereotype. But it also confirmed it with a lot of the common Asian American tropes. Right, no, for sure. And I think that that's how progress is going to look. So progress is never gonna be like a f perfect, perfect progress. I mean, for a process, I'm sorry. I mean, just like Shang-Chi had a lot of elements of Kung Fu movies in there, like a ton. But it was a Marvel movie. You never thought there could be like a legit Asian Marvel superhero, but- But you had never seen Marvel back a Kung Fu movie. And you had never seen Andrew hipster movie makers and producers on a A1 plus tier ever lend themselves to a primarily Asian cast. So everything is baby steps, guys. Here, 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 here. David, are you saying everything everywhere is baby steps all at once? <sighs> I'm tapped into the multiverse. <laughs> uh, yo, shout out to... Data from the Goonies. Wayman. I keep, I keep forgetting his Wayman. name. Wayman. Wayman. But I know that he had a really cool story because he had to go to Hong Kong because he felt like he was like, man, I got kicked out of the industry after Goonies was done. I couldn't get any more roles. After Crazy Rich Asians, he got motivated to come back. Yeah. Listen, guys. I mean, all in all, guys, I would just like to say that this can still be the greatest Asian American movie of all time, even though there's some debate whether or not it's fully Asian American or not. And still fall into stereotypical societal tropes and move them along at a, a snails or baby step pace at the same time. And I don't think anybody should be offended by us saying that. Hey, again, it is a great movie. If you made it this far and you have not watched the actual movie itself, you need to go see it. Um, it is kind of mind bending, mind blowing, extremely entertaining. Uh, so check it out. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about our take. Listen, you can disagree with this or agree with us. Uh, let us know if you thought it was the greatest Asian American film ever. And uh, you know what? Just why don't you list off what else you're looking forward to? Because I did hear that they might make a sequel to this movie already. They're thinking about it, but they don't want to do it in a cringy way. Of People course. like fusions more than they think, man. It's cringe. Honestly, 
Say Less, The Rock Shrimp, and yeah. there, and then Budokan. I mean, is fire. this movie was like a, was like a Hoppa baby. Like, it's half Asian. It, it was it, The it took, Rock Shrimp at Budokan, like, guys. Uh, but by the way, I love that Rock Shrimp every David, time I go to Budokan. David, was everything all at once like the Eileen Goo of movies, winning gold medals, but everybody likes her. She's good looking. Well, it's probably not going to get as many hits in China as Eileen Goo did. But anyway, guys, let us know in the comment section below. I think there's a lot of comparisons. Agree or disagree. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.